2014 is now history. In 2014, the first two lunar eclipses of four, called a tetrad, occurred with a sunset red color. Many have wondered if these are prophetic red blood moons referred to in Bible prophecy, and what lies ahead for 2015 and beyond. Millions around the world celebrate January 1st as the new year on the Roman calendar. Many celebrate with fireworks, dancing, and feasting. Television networks feature sporting events throughout the day. Many make New Year's resolutions to change their lives and overcome negative habits. Some hope that the next 12 months will bring an improvement in the economy and even stop violence and wars. But did 2014 give us that hope? My friends, Bible prophecy gives us an outline of future events. And you need to be prepared for the dramatic changes in political power among nations. How can you know the future? This book, the Holy Bible, gives us the reality and the sure hope of tomorrow's world. On today's program, we'll be offering you an inspiring DVD titled, End Time Prophecy and You. This DVD contains three Tomorrow's World programs on prophecy. This DVD is free of charge and it will give you insight into the future and the amazing prophecies of your Bible. My friends, what will you accomplish in 2015 and beyond? You need to know the prophetic trends for 2015 and beyond. This news is exciting, it is sure, and it will give you hope. You need to prepare for the future. Stay tuned. Warm greetings to all our friends around the world. In 2014, the heavens displayed two lunar eclipses that reminded millions of the blood-red moon referred to in your Bible. They were the first two of four total lunar eclipses in a sequence known as a tetrad. They occurred on April 15th and October 8th, 2014. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, lists the final two eclipses of the tetrad as occurring on April 4th and September 28th, 2015. NASA describes their color as sunset red, or as the eclipse progresses, quote, filling it with a coppery glow and transforming the moon into a great red orb, end of quote. My friends, what is the meaning of these blood moons, as some refer to them? Do they portend major disasters in our time? You need to know the future. On today's program, we'll explore Bible prophecy and prophetic trends for 2015 and beyond. When we look at the history of the world, it is not too difficult to predict ongoing trends for 2015. In 2014, the drama of human history and its headlong rush to world power, violence, and war continued unabated. Coalition forces attacked the extremist Islamic force called ISIS. Military jets from several countries bombed ISIS targets in Iraq and even in Syria. Russia's military marched into Ukraine's Crimea and claimed it as its own territory. Japan and China clashed over disputed island territories. Palestinian military bases in Gaza fired more than 4,000 missiles into Israel, some as far as Tel Aviv killing dozens of Israelis and prompting Israel to send land forces into Gaza to stop this action, killing or injuring thousands of Palestinians in response. Extremists even beheaded journalists as extreme evil raises its wicked ways. In West Africa, thousands died from the Ebola disease. My friends, will we ever see the end of conflict, wars, and violence? And what can you do to escape the dangerous times ahead? On today's program, we'll answer those questions. And we'll be offering you an exciting free DVD titled, End Time Prophecy and You. This DVD contains three Tomorrow's World programs on prophecy. Be sure to write down the phone number on your screen. You can also order this inspiring free DVD on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. What prophetic events and trends should we expect in 2015? Jesus gave an outline of prophetic events in the Olivet Prophecy found in Matthew 24, 
Mark 13, and Luke 21. As he stated in Matthew 24 and verse 6, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. My friends, given the history of war and peace, and given Jesus' prediction for the end time, the prophetic trend of war will continue and finally intensify. This brings us to prophetic trend number one, continuing wars, conflicts, and terrorism. My friends, human nature has not changed. Even after two world wars, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, several Middle East wars, terrorism in the United States, Great Britain, and many other nations, violence continued in 2014. End time violence and war continues just as Jesus predicted in Matthew 24, verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. World history has demonstrated that governments and alliances cannot produce lasting peace. The Apostle Paul quoted the prophet Isaiah, who stated this troubling reality in Romans 3, verse 17. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. What other major trends can we expect in 2015? The book of Revelation describes revival of a mysterious beast power in the 17th chapter. The seventh revival is yet to take place. Revelation 17, verse 10. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. Prophetic trend number two. Europe's superpower development. As we've explained in previous programs, this superpower will be a revival of the ancient Roman Empire in Europe. Ten kings or kingdoms will form a powerful alliance with the beast power. Notice that in Revelation 17, verse 12. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are our one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with Him are called, chosen, and faithful. Will a superpower arise in Europe? Read the prophecies in the book of Revelation. Various commentators have identified the beast of Revelation as the Roman Empire. This includes the new Catholic edition of the Holy Bible, translated from the Latin Vulgate, generally called the Dewey Reims Version. It makes this comment concerning the beast of Revelation 17, verse 11. The beast spoken of here seems to be the Roman Empire, as in chapter 13. This Catholic Bible also comments concerning Revelation 13, 1, as follows. The picture of the first beast is based on the seventh chapter of Daniel. This beast is the figure of kingdoms of the world, kingdoms founded on passion and selfishness, which in every age are antagonistic to Christ and seek to oppress the servants of God. Imperial Rome represents this power. Yes, even the Dewey Reims Bible admits to the identity of the beast. My friends, you need to watch developments in Europe leading to this prophesied beast's power. Prophetic trend number two, Europe's superpower development. In the first part of our program, we saw that the prophetic trends of 2014 are continuing big time in 2015. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. What five prophetic trends can we expect in 2015? Prophetic trend number one, continuing wars, conflicts, and terrorism. Prophetic trend number two, Europe's superpower development. My friends, you need to watch developments in Europe. Germany is the leading nation of the European Union and continues to prosper. 
We've seen that your Bible predicts a final revival of the Roman Empire. Notice the characteristics of the prophesied superpower called the beast in the book of Revelation. If you have your Bible, turn to Revelation, the 18th chapter. The prophesied end-time beast power is also referred to as Great Babylon. This superpower will only last for a few years. The Apostle John writes in Revelation 18 and verse 1, After these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. This end-time revival of the Roman Empire will grow into an economic superpower and will dominate international politics. It will exercise such modern military might that it will even fight against Christ at His coming, as we read in Revelation 17, verse 14. Watch the rise of Germany and the ultimate political, economic, and military power of the European Union and its successor. Prophetic trend number two, Europe's superpower development. Prophetic trend number three, watch for heavenly signs. As we pointed out earlier in the program, astronomy in 2014 and 2015 is witness to what is called a lunar tetrad. It consists of four total lunar eclipses appearing in various shades of red. These lunar eclipses should remind us of a prophetic future cosmic disturbance when the moon will become like blood. The first two lunar eclipses occurred on April 15th and October 8th, 2014. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, describes their color as sunset red, or as the eclipse progresses, quote, filling it with a coppery glow and transforming the moon into a great red orb, end of quote. Yet your Bible describes a future event even more breathtaking than these blood moons. Turn in your Bible to the sixth chapter of Revelation. Let's read Revelation 6, verse 12. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. The unusual tetrad of lunar eclipses recently displayed varying shades of red. On the internet, you can see a one-minute time-lapse video of the eclipse from the Griffith Observatory or a longer time-lapse from the NASA website. The moon did appear with a reddish hue. God is giving the world hints of what is to come in the sixth seal of Revelation. Notice the dramatic events that will take place in this future fulfillment of the sixth seal, referred to as the heavenly signs or the cosmic disturbances. Continue reading in Revelation 6, verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who is able to stand? Notice, my friends, that these cosmic disturbances introduce the day of the Lord, the great day of His, that is, Christ's wrath. What lessons can we learn from these heavenly signs? The cosmic disturbances, or the heavenly signs revealed in Revelation, the sixth chapter, signal the completion of the great tribulation and the beginning of the day of the Lord. The great tribulation features Satan's wrath on true Christians and on the Western nations, descendants of the house of Israel. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, tells us that this time, unique in all history, is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, 
Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. These heavenly signs are described in Revelation 6, verse 12. The Apostle John writes, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. My friends, you need to study these biblical signs. Read it in your own Bible in Revelation, the sixth chapter. Read about the blood-red moon that occurred when Jesus was placed in the tomb. That was on April 25th in 31 A.D. The people of Jerusalem saw a supernatural darkness for three hours while Jesus was on the cross. You can read about that in Matthew 27, verse 46. The Apostle Peter referred to the lunar eclipse in his inspiring Pentecost message. Turn in your Bible to Acts, the second chapter. Large crowds of people wanted to know the meaning of the Pentecost signs. What did the Apostle Peter say? He referred to the prophet Joel concerning the cosmic activity surrounding Jesus' death and burial. Acts 2 and verse 19. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. My friends, some self-proclaimed preachers are making wild claims about the blood moons. They do not understand the true biblical order of the seven seals and the timing of the heavenly signs. We need to look to the Bible, not to mankind's speculations as our source of truth. And we need to follow Christ's command to watch as prophesied events come to pass. So in 2015, consider prophetic trend number three, watch for heavenly signs. Prophetic trend number four, religious developments in Jerusalem. The Old Testament featured animal sacrifices as part of Old Covenant worship. These sacrifices were made at the temple in Jerusalem until its destruction in 70 A.D. by the Roman army. In recent years, religious Jews have been preparing for the restoration of these animal sacrifices. Israeli courts have prohibited attempts of the Jewish community to establish their worship services on the Temple Mount. The prophet Daniel reveals the end time scenario of animal sacrifices and their ultimate prohibition by the famous abomination of desolation. Turn in your Bible to Daniel 12, verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. If the daily sacrifice is taken away, then it must begin at some point in the future. My friends, when that happens, you will know that the end of this world civilization is about to come. Historically, the Greek ruler Antiochus Epiphanes issued a decree in 167 BC, which prohibited sacrifices in the Jerusalem temple. Antiochus further profaned the temple. He erected a statue of Jupiter Olympus in the temple and directed everyone to worship it. This abomination, referred to in chapters 8 and 11 of Daniel's prophecy, was a type of the end time event spoken of by Jesus. The book of Revelation predicts the future occupation of Jerusalem by a Gentile power. Read that in Revelation 11 and verse 1. The Apostle John records in vision. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. Yes, Gentiles will occupy Jerusalem. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, will end that occupation when He returns. Prophetic trend number four, religious developments in Jerusalem. We've briefly discussed four of five prophetic trends we need to watch in 2015 and beyond. Prophetic trend number one, continuing wars, conflicts, and terrorism. Prophetic trend number two, 
Europe superpower development. Prophetic trend number three, watch for heavenly signs. And prophetic trend number four, religious developments in Jerusalem. My friends, your Bible reveals the future of the world. We need to be ready for the greatest event ever to occur in the future, the second coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to this earth. We individually need to apply the fifth prophetic trend, Christian preparation for the kingdom of God. How can we prepare for the future? What warning did our Lord give us? Luke 21, verse 34. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Yes, my friends, we must be alert to the prophecies Jesus gave us. We must not fall asleep spiritually. The Apostle Paul also gave us this admonition in Romans 13, verse 11. And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. God's kingdom is coming soon. Apply the fifth prophetic trend, Christian preparation for the kingdom of God. My friends, we're living in the exciting prophesied time of the end. We must prepare for the glorious kingdom to come. We must draw close to God and He will draw close to us as He promises in James 4, verse 8. Watch world news and these prophetic trends in 2015 and beyond. Pray for the kingdom to come as Jesus instructed us in Matthew 6, verse 10. Thank God for His coming kingdom and His revelation of prophetic events.